This is a huge discovery, and we think that it's a huge discovery. The most exciting piece of this telescope, of this remarkable instrument we've put in space, is finding things that we didn't expect, that we can't explain, because that means that we have to revise our understanding of the universe. The Big Bang Theory is the pinnacle of cosmic theory that explains our origins, but the James Webb Space Telescope has found something that completely goes against it. Neil deGrasse Tyson has said that the Webb Telescope saw black holes of a previous universe that created our universe. It might be time for our cosmic understanding to be rewritten again, but how much will the changes be? Join us as we explore the JWST discoveries, which make no sense at all to astronomers. Could they have been wrong about the Big Bang, or was there a mistake with the measurements? Let's find out. Number 1, JWST found extremely early galaxies. Over the past century, one of the most significant scientific triumphs has been the formulation of the hot Big Bang theory. This theory proposes that the universe as we perceive it today emerged from a state that was hotter, denser, and more uniform. Initially suggested as a credible alternative to mainstream explanations for the expanding universe, the theory gained astonishing confirmation in the 1960s with the discovery of the primeval fireball, now recognized as the cosmic microwave background. For more than 50 years, the Big Bang has stood as the preeminent theory explaining our cosmic origins, with an inflationary period happening before it and setting up the events. However, both cosmic inflation and the Big Bang have faced persistent challenges from astronomers and astrophysicists throughout the years, and the JWST has found yet another challenge. JWST introduced a new layer of complexity to the cosmic narrative. Its detection of early galaxies unexpectedly more massive than anticipated threatens to reshape our comprehension of the universe. The JWST revelation of these high-mass galaxies in the early universe suggests a potential need to re-evaluate our understanding of the cosmic framework. This discovery does not seamlessly align with existing astronomical models. The James Webb Space Telescope has only been operational for less than two years, but it has already provided unparalleled glimpses of the universe during the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The James Webb Space Telescope is upsetting the apple cart. All of a sudden, we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. One notable revelation has been the unexpectedly quick emergence of large, star-studded galaxies. Utilizing the JWST infrared sensing instruments, astronomers have pinpointed six colossal galaxies from the universe's infancy. These entities, if their magnitude is confirmed, possess the potential to reshape our perception of galaxy origins. Published in the journal Nature, these findings rely on data collected by the James Webb Space Telescope, depicting the universe as it existed 13.5 billion years ago, which is a mere 3% of its current age. So, what is it about these galaxies that's so confusing? A mere 500 to 700 million years after the colossal event that marked the birth of our universe, something baffling unfolded. Galaxies displaying a level of maturity similar to our 13 billion year old Milky Way. In these celestial entities, the mass of stars reaches several billion times that of our Sun, with one potential behemoth boasting a staggering 100 billion times the Sun's mass. To put it in perspective, our Milky Way harbors a star mass equivalent to around 60 billion suns. In other words, these galaxies are more massive than our own Milky Way. Astrophysicist Erica Nelson from the University of Colorado Boulder, co-author of the study, conveyed her astonishment, stating that it's bewildering for entities of such magnitude to show up so quickly. The conventional understanding didn't anticipate the swift formation of galaxies with stellar masses matching those of the Milky Way in the early years of the universe. The unexpected revelation challenges prevailing cosmological theories, which suggest galaxies evolve from small stellar and dust clusters gradually growing in size over time. According to this narrative, matter in the early universe coalesced at a gradual pace. However, this narrative falls short in explaining the newfound colossal entities. The lead researcher, EVOL Lobb, questions how these monsters seemingly took a fast track to maturity. 
This revelation defies established scientific beliefs and disrupts the conventional wisdom that the universe's colossal galaxies took a considerably longer time to develop. Astronomers describe these entities as universe breakers, a term coined informally, noting that they are indeed living up to their name by challenging and reshaping our understanding of cosmic evolution. Astrophysicist Emma Chapman from the University of Nottingham in England, uninvolved in the study, suggests that if these findings withstand scrutiny, our perception of the early universe might undergo a seismic shift. The revelation of colossal galaxies in close proximity to the Big Bang challenges the notion of a dark cosmic era, suggesting that star formation could have been going on much earlier than we thought. However, before we start rewriting the annals of cosmology, a note of caution emerges from the researchers. The possibility lingers that some of these entities might be concealed in supermassive black holes. What appears as starlight in the images might, in fact, be gas and dust succumbing to their gravitational pull. Another astronomer unaffiliated with the study points out that the intricacies of black hole formation and growth during these early years remain shrouded in mystery. She says that the data introduces not a contradiction to cosmology but rather a call for understanding the novel physics governing their formation and expansion. To validate their discoveries, researchers could employ spectroscopy to capture a spectrum image of these identified objects, shedding light on their age. Galaxies from the early universe exhibit significant redshift, indicating that the light they emit has undergone considerable stretching on its journey to Earth. The higher the redshift value, the more the light has stretched, signaling greater distance and age for the galaxy. Spectroscopy could unveil whether these potential galaxies, labeled high-redshift candidates, are as ancient as they appear or if they are intrinsically readened galaxies from a more recent cosmic period. Number 2, Michael Bowen's Take Astronomers emphasize the need for more observations to confirm the findings, but they suggest that regardless of the outcome, the identified mass implies a staggering revelation. The known mass of stars during this cosmic era might be up to 100 times greater than previously estimated. Even if the sample size is halved, Michael Bowen Coughlin from the University of Texas Austin adopts a different perspective on the issue, unveiling his insights in nature astronomy. The prevailing cosmological model, labeled Lambda CDM, with CDM representing cold dark matter, posits a scenario where ordinary matter and dark matter were thoroughly mixed during the early universe. As dark matter halos collapse to give rise to the first galaxies, a portion of the intertwined ordinary matter transitioned into new stars. Bowen Coughlin says that we have very good evidence of the distribution of matter in the early universe from the cosmic microwave background. He embarked on calculating the proportion of ordinary matter that should convert into stars to align with the high-mass galaxies detected by the JWST. His conclusion Nearly every available atom would have been used in star formation, yet Bowen Coughlin deems this near 100% efficiency as bordering on the impossible. He says that the modern universe has about a 10% efficiency in comparison. Mark Vogelsberger from MIT who wasn't involved in the study, says the paper's theoretical analysis is very sound. The calculation's robustness stems from minimal assumptions, according to Vogelsberger. Despite Bowen Coughlin's computations, does this imply the overthrowing of Lambda CDM? He stops. Short of dismissing Lambda CDM, he says that no other theory currently matches its capability, making it a last resort to contemplate replacing it with something else. But what alternative explanations could be in play? Number 3, Unexplainable Discoveries Leading a team from the University of Minnesota, Haley Williams unveiled the discovery of a captivating early galaxy merely 500 million years post-Big Bang. Also relying on the JWST, the galaxy's faint visibility hinges on gravitational lensing amplification. Williams highlights its star formation rate, which is tens of times higher than galaxies from a slightly later era. While acknowledging the lower mass of this galaxy compared to those scrutinized by Bowen Coughlin, Williams speculates on the potential applicability of this intense star formation to higher mass galaxies at similar redshifts. However, Bowen Coughlin remains cautious, considering the small size of this object, 
just 105 light years across, significantly smaller than typical galaxies. He contemplates the possibility that it might be a globular cluster instead. Addressing the tension in cosmological models, one alternative involves adjustments to lambda CDM. Early dark energy models, or ED, propose modifying the behavior of dark energy immediately after the Big Bang. This adjustment could reconcile discrepancies related to the Hubble constant to align with other observations. These models require extra matter to be present in the early universe. Bowen Coughlin calculates that in such a scenario, the density of matter in early galaxies would triple, diminishing the need for hyper-efficient star formation to achieve comparable outcomes. However, ED models contend that the universe is only 13 billion years old, a massive difference from the 13.7 billion number gained from other measurements. Another plausible resolution revolves around astronomers potentially misattributing some of the galaxy's light to stars. Bowen Coughlin leans toward the likelihood that the light originates from accretion disks encircling supermassive black holes, considering this one of the most plausible scenarios. Astronomers, having glimpsed a handful of these galaxies so far, caution that their presence in a mere quarter millionth of the sky may not be representative of the entire cosmos. Joel Leha from Penn State, who was not involved in the research, suggests that with comprehensive statistical surveys, the observed tension might dissolve. The doubt arises, though, are they genuinely distant galaxies? Peter Beruzzi from the University of Arizona, also not part of Bowen Coughlin's study, points out that nearby low-mass galaxies can mimic the appearance of distant massive ones. Definitive conclusions await further measurements. Crucially, what's lacking are spectroscopic measurements of these galaxies, which would unveil their true distance and enable the search for signs of black holes. Michael Bowen Coughlin, anticipating forthcoming data, asserts that within a couple of years or possibly less, the gravity of the situation will become apparent. But while we wait for this data, let's see what theories astronomers are postulating in order to explain this phenomenon. Some astronomers believe that an unknown mechanism could be at work here. This mystery could be solved if we suppose that massive black holes could have existed in the early universe. According to astronomers, this assumption would help us explain why massive galaxies appear in telescope surveys. But the problem is explaining how so many black holes appeared in the early universe. That's where a very controversial theory by a Nobel Prize winner comes in. Number 4, A Controversial Theory As per the prevailing theory of origins, about 14 billion years ago, all that ever was or will be existed within an infinitely dense singularity, a minuscule point. This singularity exploded, giving rise to everything in our observable universe. This is a very basic simplification of the Big Bang. Yet, for numerous physicists, 13.7 billion years seems insufficient for the formation of intricate structures such as superclusters. A physicist from the University of Oxford challenges the conventional Big Bang model, aiming to substantiate his contentions relying on the residual evidence from the cosmic microwave background radiation, which was formed when the universe was a mere 300,000 years old. This scientist posits that the Big Bang wasn't the origin but rather one episode in a cycle of recurring Big Bangs termed eons. Each of these events ushered in a new phase of the universe. Sir Roger Penrose, a Nobel laureate in physics in 2020, renowned for his contributions to mathematical methods and insights into black holes, proposes that our universe has undergone multiple Big Bangs, with another slated for the future. Penrose's Nobel recognition stems from his advancement of mathematical techniques that confirmed and broadened Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. He also delved into the intricacies of black holes, revealing how dense objects undergo gravitational collapse culminating in singularities, which are points of infinite mass. Accepting the prize, Penrose reiterated his unconventional theory, describing it as crazy, the universe will expand until all matter decays, initiating a new Big Bang in the birth of a fresh universe. In an interview, Penrose expressed his conviction that the Big Bang wasn't the starting point, something predates it, and that something is coming in our future. So, how does the physicist support his theory termed conformal cyclic cosmology challenging the prevailing Big Bang narrative, 
Sir Roger Penrose claims the discovery of six warm sky points, known as Hawking points, each approximately eight times larger than the Moon's diameter. Named after the late Professor Stephen Hawking, who proposed the idea that black holes emit radiation and eventually evaporate, these points suggest the potential existence of such holes, even though spotting them is improbable within the current universe's age of 13.77 billion years. In straightforward terms, Penrose posits that our universe is neither the first nor the final one, arising from a densely packed highly ordered mass evolving into the intricate cosmos we perceive. The existing Big Bang model rooted in inflation lacks an explanation for the existence of a low-entropy highly ordered state at the universe's birth unless events were set in motion well before the actual Big Bang. According to Penrose's theory, our universe has previously and will once again revert to a low-entropy state as it nears its ultimate expansion into nothingness, leaving a frigid, dark, and featureless abyss. Penrose suggests that we can observe dead black holes, remnants of past universes or eons. Proving this could also affirm Hawking's hypothesis. Penrose's 2020 paper, featured in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, presents evidence of anomalous circular spots in the cosmic microwave background with elevated temperatures. Data on these spots originated from the Planck 70 GHz satellite and underwent validation through approximately 10,000 simulations. In 2018, Penrose identified radiation hotspots in the cosmic microwave background as potential outcomes of evaporating black holes. A 2010 paper by Penrose and Vahe Gerzadian proposed cyclic cosmology, asserting that uniform temperature rings in the CMB stemmed from gravitational wave signatures of colliding black holes in a preceding universe. Black holes leak radiation and eradicate matter. They contribute to reducing entropy as the universe approaches its expansion's conclusion. Remaining black holes will evaporate or merge, restoring order. This leads to a state resembling the Big Bang, smoothing spacetime geometry from its current jagged form. According to Penrose's model, a new eon begins after the universe can no longer expand, collapsing into a highly ordered system and triggering the next Big Bang. Penrose argues against the conventional view that CMB temperature variations should be random. He and Gerzadian found over 12 concentric circles within NASA's WMAP satellite data, suggesting evidence of gravitational waves from prior eons. If validated, Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology implies our universe is one of the possibly infinite eons, eliminating the need for a Big Bang precursor. Although contested, the hypothesis has significant implications if accurate, challenging the cosmological community's traditional views. Critics highlight difficulties in reconciling an infinitely large universe in one eon with a super-small one in the next, requiring particles to lose mass as the universe ages. Let us know if you think Penrose's theory is solid or if it's just another Big Bang contender that will be forgotten like many others. Leave a like and subscribe for more.